What's up YouTube? So in this video, I'm going to be ranking my top 10 safeties of the NFL of the 2021 NFL draft class. Um so I have done videos on everybody on this list just like the other rankings. Um I don't know if all of the videos are out yet. I think most of them should be. Uh the Jamar Johnson one might not be. Uh as you can see, he is my number 10. We'll get into that in a moment, but it will be out before the before the draft regardless. So yeah. Anyway, starting with number 10, as I mentioned, Jamar Johnson out of Indiana. So he is 6'1 and 197 pounds. Uh, I do see him as a free safety. Um, he does have some burst to him, and he has some range. I wouldn't say he's super rangy. Uh, he does need to finish a little bit more, um, and I'd like to see him tackle a little more. He, he does seem like he doesn't want to tackle unless he absolutely has to. And he does look a little bit lost sometimes when he's reading the field. <coughs> Sorry. Um, but I do I do like him. He, he, he's a solid prospect. Free safeties are hard to find. And if you can go get this guy somewhere on day three, uh, you'll be okay. I think he definitely has some development to go. But uh, I think if you're like a like a Tampa 2 team where you're going to have two deep safeties, I think he's pretty good for that. I don't think he has quite the range to be a single high safety. Um, there's a, there's very few guys in this class that do. We'll get into them later, but yeah. By the way, sorry for any background noise. I'll try to talk over it. Um, but anyway, uh, my next on the list is Andre Sisco out of Syracuse. He is six foot and 209 pounds. Now, this is a guy that is being really hyped up. And I do think he's an okay prospect, but I do think he is being slightly overrated. Um, he misses tackles quite a bit. Uh, he's not a fantastic tackler, um, but he is a willing tackler, I'll say. His hips are good. He's a good deep half guy. So similar to Jamar Johnson, I think if you're like a Tampa 2 or like a uh, cover 3 team, I think he's fine for that because uh, he does have some range, but I don't think he should be covering um, the whole field. I don't think he's a... I don't think he has the range to be a single high guy. Um, he goes for the ball. His ball skills are okay. Recognition is is solid. Uh, he's not afraid of contact by any means. I would like to see him wrap up because he does try to hit rather than tackle. Um, and he doesn't really have the power to really... Like, he doesn't really have the power behind those hits. Um, he can play man and zone, but I do prefer him in zone. His eyes can get him in trouble sometimes. He does fall from misdirection, um, but I do I, I do see him as a as a pretty decent player. Uh, like I said, I, I think he's a solid deep half safety in like a Tampa two type situation. But if he has to cover the whole field, I think I think he is kind of in trouble. Okay, so moving forward is a guy I mentioned in my linebacker video. Um, Divine Diablo, I mentioned that he would be on this list. Um, so he is someone who can play strong safety and linebacker. He is 6'3 and 226 pounds, and he does definitely have the athleticism to be able to play safety. Uh, he can cover pretty decently, especially tight ends. Um, he's definitely not afraid to come down and smack somebody. Uh, no real pass rush or anything like that, and he doesn't deal with trash that well, which is why he might be a better box safety. Um, I don't think he necessarily fits either position perfectly. I think he is someone that you should like move around pretty decently. I I, I do like him as a prospect. Um, I think he is probably a day two guy, like third round. I think everyone I've said, like Cisco and Johnson, they're both day three guys to me, uh, to be totally honest with you. But um, yeah. I think Diablo would be a pretty solid box safety for you that can come down and smack people. This next person, I believe I, I also mentioned, well, I know he's in my corner list, but I also think I said he could play safety. Uh, Elijah Molden. I'm a big fan of this guy. He's 5'10 and about 190 pounds. Uh, I don't see him as a free safety by any means because he doesn't have the range or athleticism. But I do, see, I do think he could play some strong safety. He's just kind of small. Um, so I do think he would have to gain a little bit of weight. Um, I think he is in a great position. Like if you draft him right now and 
you know, use him as a nickel corner for now and eventually get him stronger and a little bit bigger and move him to strong safety. I think that would be the ideal situation. Um, Because he's a solid tackler. Uh, and Washington does play him at safety sometimes, and he has enough range to be like a like a deep half safety. Um, and he absolutely loves to come down and smack people. He is a little angry ass dude. He moves very very well. He's good in zone and man coverage as long as he's not up against someone way faster than him. But I do think he is better in zone. Um, but if 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 he just has to play like deep half or if it's like a cover three team. Uh, and he can just come down and smack people. I think that would be really good for him. And like I said, if you play him at nickel for now until he does get a little bit bigger, um, I think that's an ideal situation for him. And then move him to strong safety. I, I think that could really work for you. I think he is a great guy to go pick up somewhere in the third round. Um, I, as I mentioned in my corner video, I'm just like a really, really big fan of him. Okay, so this next player was also in my linebacker video, similar to Divine Diablo, and that is JOK. Now, JOK is my linebacker number one, but he is my he is my safety number six uh, as well. I think he's very good at doing both. He's 6'1 and 215 pounds. Um, he's bursty as hell. He, he's angry. He's got great instincts. He's pretty good in coverage in zone and man. Very good at locking up tight ends. Um... Very, very solid tackler. His aggression can work against him sometimes, as I mentioned in my linebacker video. He is a... Uh, I mentioned I kind of compared it to Troy Polamalu, where Troy Polamalu would you know, always go for turnovers and big hits and stuff like that. And a lot of times it would be big momentum shifts for the team and would really help him and would really help the Steelers out. But sometimes it is going to result in a touchdown over your head. Um... That just kind of comes with being an aggressive player. It's it's the give and take that you kind of just kind of deal with. Um, but it's a good problem to have. Uh, he doesn't stop at all. Like, he keeps moving throughout the whole play. He, he has a great motor. Uh, fast as hell for his size. Um, not afraid of blocks. He can get off blocks pretty well. Loves to smack people. Violent as shit. Um... And he has the athleticism to recover from his mistakes. Again, I think if it's it's like a like a deep half situation, I do think he has the range to do it or a cover three team. And the great thing about it is this guy can also come down and play will for you. So he can start the package off at strong safety, and then you can move things around and have him play will linebacker and then back to strong safety without having to take out anybody off your team. Like, you can really move players around and really get exotic with your packages if you have a guy like this. And I, I love I love being able to do shit like that. Okay, so this next player is actually one of the first players I watched in this class. And that is Tyree Gillespie. I'm a big fan of him. Um, he's 6 foot and 210 pounds. And he had no interceptions in college. But... That's just because people never really threw his way. Um, he's fast as hell, has great range. Uh, he can. He loves making plays in the run game. He's very good at it. He is a real thumper. He will s smack the shit out of you. He has the power. Um, he stopped Najee Harris dead in his tracks, like on the goal line. He came down and just smacked him and, and stopped him dead in his tracks right in the goal line. Right there showed me that he, he's already a great strong safety. Right there. Um, he act, But he actually has some legit range as well. He's got really good hips. Um, uh, he can work on some small things for sure as far as technique. Uh, I think he can play some single high, but you don't want, it, you don't want to do it too much. Uh, he did follow Kyle Pitts around, so he is pretty good in coverage. Kyle Pitts did get, did get his on him. But um, he can play in the box. I, I will say his range isn't elite, but it is there. Um, I think it again if it's if it's a if he's in a situation where he can just cover a deep half, I definitely think he has enough uh, range to do that. And if not, he's also if you just put him in the box and let him smack the shit out of people, he's fantastic for that too. 
He is a second round player just because that's where safeties typically get drafted. But maybe maybe even early third. But I am a massive fan of him. Okay, so next on the list is someone who is being hyped up as the potential best safety, or was being hyped up as the best safety in the class. Now I think it's pretty clear who it is. Uh, we'll get there in a minute. But um, Javon Morig at a TCU. Uh, he is 6'2 and 202 pounds. I do like him a lot, but I definitely don't buy him being the best safety in the class. Uh, I don't even think he's the best safety out of TCU. We'll get there in a minute. Um, so he's kind of grabby in coverage. That's one thing I noticed. Um, he's very solid at, at, uh, at helping people out. Like if his corner is going to be in trouble, he's very good at realizing that and getting over there. Uh, he will get some holding calls for being grabby. He is very good at communicating. That's one thing I noticed. Um, he's very good playing man coverage against tight ends. He reads crossing routes really well. That's one thing I noticed. He has some good ball skills to him, uh, good instincts. He has some solid burst. He is more. He's definitely a willing tackler, but not a great one. He definitely tackles like a free safety. Um, I like him in coverage. And his range is good, but not elite. It, it, it's just solid. And his speed in general just isn't great. But it, it's good, just not elite. Um, again, I think is if he's a deep half safety, I think... He's really good for that. He can do some single high things, but I don't want that to be the the only thing he does. Um, I think he does that better than anyone I've mentioned so far, but I definitely think there are two safeties in this class that are way rangier than him, and we'll get there in a moment. But uh, first, we're going back with Hamza Nazirladeen out of Florida State. So he is 6'4 and 220 pounds. He is definitely not afraid to hit. He will smack the shit out of you. He has great length to him. He's a great tackler. Uh, he reads eyes very, very well. He's pretty solid in zone coverage. Um, if you put him in the box and just let him go, he's a fantastic player. Uh, he can play some slot corner for you. He's pretty good in coverage man-to-man -man against like tight ends. Um... You can even move him down and let him play a little bit of well linebacker, and I think he'll be pretty good at that. Uh, he doesn't really have much range, so definitely don't move, don't let him play like free safety. Uh, but he definitely has burst. And as a strong safety, I think he is by far the best strong safety, pure strong safety in this class. Um, he's just really, really fantastic to me. Like he really is. Uh, so long as you know what to do with him, it, it, if you're trying to make him, you know. You know, be out there and be rangy. No, don't do that. But uh, if you just want him to be in the box and smash people, he is fantastic for that. So, yeah. Okay, so number my number two on the list was my number one safety for a very long time. And that is our Darius Washington. I mentioned when I was talking about Javon Morig that he wasn't the best safety out of uh, TCU. And this is exactly who I was talking about. Uh, now, keep in mind, this is just who I think is the better player. This isn't who I think will get drafted first. Because it is very possible that Morig gets drafted first just because he's bigger. Because that is the big thing about Ardarius is that he is 5'8 and 178 pounds. So he is a very small safety. But I don't care because of what the film says. Um, he's got fantastic instincts. He reads the quarterback's eyes really, really well. His ball skills are really good. He's solid in zone and man coverage. Um, he has more than enough uh, range to get the job done. Um, he's not like Earl Thomas range, but it is definitely really, really good. Um, he can absolutely play single high safety in, in the NFL. Uh, he can definitely generate turnovers for you. Uh, as far as his tackling, he definitely tackles like a free safety, and you know he is small, but he will still come down and smack somebody. Uh, he is much more physical than you would expect. And the crazy thing is, uh, Morig is the bigger guy, but Ardarius Washington is by far the more physical of the two, which is shocking. 
Uh, overall, I, I really, really like our Darius Washington, and he was my number one safety for a long time. I had to keep re-watching him in my number one, and we'll get into number one right now, which is Richie Grant out of UCF. Um, we'll get into why he was my number two and our Darius was my number one for a long time, and we'll get to why I changed my mind. Um, so he's six foot and 194 pounds, so he is a little bit bigger than our Darius. Uh, he absolutely has the athleticism. He has the most range I've seen in any draft class in a very, very long time. Um, he looks a little bit bigger than reported. Uh, he has absolutely elite range. He comes down and smacks the shit out of people. Um, he's pretty good in man coverage as well. Very, very good in zone. His instincts are are pretty good. Uh, there are some problems with it. And he is a very, very solid tackler. Um, but the thing that did limit him for me is that he does have problems with misdirection. You can beat him with misdirection, and that does get him in trouble sometimes. And that right there is what kept him below our Darius. And to me, they're both still very, very close. But the thing that changed my mind is just how different the range was from Richie, from Richie Grant. Um, the range that he has is just something that is so rare. You have to go multiple draft classes before you see somebody with range like he has. And it's just hard to pass up. And you might be able to help him with the misdirection by coaching him up. You can't teach our Darius to be faster. Uh, now, Ardarius definitely has enough speed to be a fantastic safety as well. Don't get it twisted. But the one issue with Richie Grant is something that you might be able to coach out of him. You know what I'm saying? So that is what gave him the number one spot for me. Um, I still do think he needs to work on the misdirection problem because it definitely does exist. Um, but I, I really, really like him a lot. Uh, he is one of my fa Him and Ardarius are both two of my favorite players in this entire class. And I will definitely be following their careers very closely. But, um, yeah. Anyway, I think that's going to be it for this video. If you liked it, I appreciate you hitting that like button. If you have any questions or comments, leave in the comments down below. Subscribe if you haven't already. And I'll see you next time. Bye, guys.